Hi, today on Do It 3D Canada, we're going to be looking at the 3D printer protection enclosure by UPay. Stay tuned. This enclosure was sent to me free of charge by UPay, but all the opinions in this video are my own. So this enclosure is uh, the small size. It is uh, measures 25.6 inches by 21.6 inches by 29.5 inches. Um, the, as I say, this is the small size meant for smaller printers, but they do have a larger size available. I will have all the links and um, discount codes, etc. in my description below. So let's get to the unboxing here. So when we first open it, we're presented with the um, enclosure itself uh, with the instruction sheet on top. Um, it's well packaged and um, yeah. So we have the enclosure itself, and now we are presented with the LED strip, which is um, going to be mounted on the inside of the enclosure. And we have our carbon fiber rods, uh, three different lengths, and then we have our connecting corners and uh, middle pieces that we are going to use to connect the um, rods together. I should also mention that it does come with a 180 day warranty. That's a six month warranty. That's pretty good. So let's go ahead and open the package. Um, we will grab the enclosure itself out of the bag and packaged in with the enclosure is a pretty simplified um, instruction sheet. The instructions on this sheet are pretty vague uh, but it is actually pretty self-explanatory how to assemble this. So we'll speed this part up so as not to bore you, but uh, basically there's three different lengths of carbon fiber rods. Uh, the long ones get assembled together with the uh, middle piece to make them uh, longer rods. Uh, those are the corner pieces for the enclosure. So there's four of those that have got to be assembled with the um, little corner adapters on them. And then there's the middle length rods which got to be assembled together. Those represent the uh, length or the depth of the enclosure. And the shorter rods get assembled together and the shorter rods are going to be um, the actual width of the enclosure. So once they're all together we'll start building the enclosure. So at this point the enclosure is pretty much self-explanatory. The uh, longest pieces are the four uprights um, and then the middle pieces or the middle length pieces are the um, depth of the enclosure and the short pieces are the width of the enclosure. So once this is all put together like so we just go ahead and we clip on the LED light. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory as well. It goes towards the back of the enclosure. So now we're going to get to putting the cover on. Okay, when it comes to putting the, um, the actual enclosure on the frame, there's no real simple way to do it. Just open up the zipper all the way front and top. Uh, and then however you want to do it. I just sort of, I struggled with it a little bit. But uh, basically what you want to do is uh, take the frame and insert the frame inside the cover. Um, you want to make sure that you get that LED light at the back of the enclosure. Um, back and top of the enclosure. So in this case I just kind of laid it down on its side. Struggled a little bit with uh, getting everything out of the way. Um, it's kind of comical watching me do this but number one thing is patience. Um, get it started and once you get it started then you're just going to slowly feed it so that you get those uh, white corners down into the corners of the cover and then once you do that you can lift the uh, sides up and everything will just tension up as you go. Uh, just be careful not to pull the frame apart and if you do that's okay just put it back together and move on but uh, yeah once you get these corners on it's pretty simple then you're able to just zip the cover right up and around the front so that's pretty pretty simple if you take your time and just be patient with it so um, it's got some pretty cool features on it uh, there's an opening on the one side where you can uh, run in some filament or you can run in um, anything we have a pocket there for accessories and so forth so but yeah it's uh it's got some pretty cool features and really overall it's pretty easy to put together if as i say if you just have patience and take a lot of time to do it so and inside um you can see the uh, led light at the back there i've plugged it in it plugs into a five volt power supply and it has an on off switch and it does a really good job at lighting the enclosure especially with those reflective silver sides so let's try some printers in. Uh, the first printer we tried was the Kingroon KP3S uh, that I have here um, and it fits in there with tons of room to spare. So 
we'll just grab a roll of filament because uh, this printer has uh, no built-in filament holder on it. It's got a, a spool holder that goes onto the side, so there's plenty of room to fit that spool beside the printer, um, like so. Or, I mean, the other option is you can open that little flap to the left there, and you could run the filament in from an external source um, using a reverse Bowden tube if you wanted to. Um, some people have made modifications to this printer where they've had the spool go on top of the printer. So as you'll see, there's plenty of room for the spool on top of the printer as well. So let's try another printer and see how it fits. So the next printer up is the Prusa Mini. Uh, now this particular Prusa Mini has a custom base built on it that I had 3D printed and put on it. So, But that's okay because the filament goes in underneath. So I'll just grab a spool of filament and show you. The filament actually feeds from underneath this particular um, um, stand that was designed for the Prusa Mini. You still could fit, feed it in from the side or from an external spool holder, no problem. There's tons of room around it. So that's the Prusa Mini. Um, let's see if we can fit a bigger printer in here now. So let's go. So the next printer we threw in was the Atomstack Cambrian printer. Um, I had to walk around because I dropped my mouse off the end of the table, but uh, the Atomstack Cambrian Pro is approximately the same size as a, a, your Ender 3 or your Ender 3 clone printers. So anything in that Ender 3 style bed slinger printer will fit in there just fine with the uh, spool mounted on top. So that's an easy one to fit in uh, and no problem for any printer of this class. So, just for fun, because I could, I threw in the, uh, <clears throat> the Voron Trident 250mm printer. I would never enclose this printer because this printer has an enclosure all on its own anyways, but I just wanted to see if it would fit. And surprisingly, it fits not bad considering this is the small enclosure that uh, UPay um, offers. Um, you can fit a spool on the side. It's very snug fit, but, but it can be done. So not that, not that I would ever enclose this printer, uh, but I just wanted to see if it would work. They do have a large version of this enclosure, which can hold like your CR10s and, and it would hold this printer no problem. So there is a larger version for those larger printers out there. So um, just so you know, this, this is a pretty good size enclosure considering it's their small one and it's amazing what you could fit in it. And there's still lots of top room on that even even with this in here, and that light gives us a lot of uh, bright light for um, seeing what's going on in there. So yeah, I just had to try this for fun, but no, I would never throw my uh, um, my Vorons in an enclosure like this. So here we go. So in conclusion, um, I, I, I like this enclosure uh, that UPay has um, put together and sent me. Again, this is the small version of the enclosure. It's gonna hold any of your Ender 3 clone and Ender 3 clone type size printers. Um, no problem at all. Your mini printers are gonna be no problem whatsoever. Um, you could probably even get away with um, something a little larger if you wanted to. Um, what I like about this enclosure is um, considering all the, the ways I made it look like I struggled a lot, it was rather easy to put together. I like that they use carbon fiber rods inside um, as opposed to plastic, which would be more susceptible to breakage and um, bending, etc. So they have used really good quality carbon fiber rods, um, which will not bake, break or bend. Uh, the parts that are used to connect them are, are really well injection molded plastic parts. Um, this enclosure is extremely light, so it would be very easy to take anywhere you want it to go. Even if you wanted to take it apart and put it together somewhere else, that's real easy to do as well. It's got a little handy pocket on this side for putting your tools and so forth in. And again, on this side, we have the flap opening, which allows you to run some filament from outside or um, vent the enclosure out, etc. cetera. Um, the interior is lined with a nice uh, fire retardant silver lining, uh, which does a couple things. It keeps the heat in. And it's also going to give you a nice bright light inside the enclosure due to the reflection properties of the, of the side in here. Um, that's the other thing I like as well is it's got a really well done and well positioned LED light in there. So I'm just going to plug this in to show you. It goes into a 5 volt USB plug and when you turn that on that lights up the enclosure quite well. So. 
that's that, that's a, that's a really cool feature um, for an enclosure for this kind of money. Um, yeah, and um, other than that, um, there's not much more to say about this other than I quite like it. What don't I like about it? Um, there's not much I don't like. Um, the one thing that I do find could be an issue is if you're running an ASA ABS material or a nylon material in here, there's no ventilation as far as exterior ventilation goes. Now, I suppose depending on where you're putting this enclosure, you could open this window slightly to do some ventilation to get those fumes out of the enclosure on the side. Uh, but that's not going to do you very good if you're in an enclosed space like my studio down here. Uh, and otherwise, it's, a, it's quite a well-sealed enclosure, but when you're sealed up and your, your fumes are going inside, um, basically they're just going to be building up inside the enclosure and eventually come into your room when you do open the enclosure. But that's an issue with any enclosure of this type, um, whether it be um, a hard-sided enclosure, one of these soft-sided enclosures, or even a homemade enclosure that some people put a box over. Um, you're you're going to have the issues with the ventilation of the fumes regardless. So that's that's a negative, but it's it's a negative for any kind of enclosure um, that you get of this style. Um, so, but the idea of these enclosures is so that you can print those ABSs, you can print those high temperature filaments that are susceptible to breezes and susceptible to in the external environment and causing your prints to come off your plate. This will prevent that for sure. Um, so other than that, I'm quite happy uh, with this enclosure um, overall. I'm just going to zip it up here. There we go. Um, this is very good. Now the larger one, um, if you just check out my uh, links, my uh, uh, the links below in the description, I'm going to be linking to their site, um, uh, which also shows the larger enclosure. Um, I'm also going to be linking to the Canadian site, which is a, which is a um, uh, Amazon link. And I will also have discount codes in the description as well, which will give you a discount on these enclosures. Um, these are very, very good priced enclosures for what they are. I think they're well worth it. Um, $39.95, I believe, for the U.S. one. Uh, if I'm wrong, it'll be in the description. And I believe $59.95 in Canada, Canadian, on the Amazon Canada site for this. So... Go ahead and check them out. I want to thank everybody for watching this video today. If you like what you see and you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up and um, go ahead and share this with anybody you think might want to use one of these enclosures. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time on DeWitt 3D Canada. Bye for now.